So we are supposed to talk about first language acquisition. So what, is, uh, what do you mean by the process of acquisition? Here we have two important terms. We have the term of acquisition and the term of, <coughs> and the term of learning. I'll start by defining the term acquisition, which is a different concept from learning concept. So acquisition is the process of so the process of acquisition has some basic requirements. Children requires interaction with other language users to bring the general language capacity into contact with a specific language. <coughs> so acquisition differs from learning in in uh, in terms of uh, uh, being uh, uh, an uh, in, in terms of something uh, which people uh, or which children born with so it's 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 an uh, it's an unconscious effort and this is one of the main distinctions between acquisition and learning acquisition is something that is uh, that is doesn't require a, a conscious as as learning so it happens or it takes a place naturally without an effort, uh, without uh, further instruction as, as learning. Okay, children who don't hear language via acquisition will not learn a language. And I think this is something that everyone would, would agree on this point, that children who don't hear language via acquisition will not learn a language and they will not be considered as native speakers. Okay, one of the important and one of the fundamental components of acquisition is input. So human infants are helped in their language acquisition by the physical behavior of all the children and adults who provide language samples or what is known as input. So children hear something or hear <coughs> Uh, uh, the language from you know from all the children or from adults and based on them and based on this they construct what is known as you know uh, the uh, the language uh, repository or the language uh, in general okay and this would lead us to another important uh, uh, topic regarding uh, the acquisition process which is caregiver speech and the caregiver speech is a special type of speech that's given by uh, someone okay who uh, who accompanies uh, this or that child so it's a type of conversational structure that seems to assign an interactive role to the to the young child before he or she becomes as speaking participants so during the process of acquisition the caregiver okay should play this interaction or this interactive uh, role uh, within this speech or within this type of conversational structure uh, there is a sample or it involves a sample uh, it, it, it involves a simple sentence structure and many reporting and paraphrasing. So this is one of the features of this type of speech. It's not an ordinary kind of speech that's, uh, that's spoken or that's given by adults. It's rather uh, a simple uh, or a special type of, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of simplified sentences for the children, okay, in order to, uh, to acquire such language, okay, which includes some reporting and paraphrasing. So, within this process of acquisition, we have what is known as the acquisition schedule. So we need to know that children have the biological capacity to identify aspects of linguistic input at different stages during the early years of life. We have to make sure that they don't have any sort of uh, 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 biological problems or uh, dysfunctions. Since one month old, children start developing a range of crying styles, 
with different patterns for different for different needs let me correct this okay so for different for different needs it produces for example a big smiles in response to uh, a speaking phase or start to create distinct vocalization since they don't have the ability to speak okay they they start creating this uh, this kind of styles okay so for example they use the same style to indicate or to express different feelings different needs etc so let's start by talking about this schedule which start from a uh, few months old until three years old uh, approximately so the first stage is called cooing stage and this stage is the earliest use of speech like sounds uh, which uh, which is which has been described as cooing it takes a place in the first few months of life of children and during this stage the child gradually uh, or the the child gradually becomes capable or able to produce sequences of vowel like sounds such as uh and u uh. okay so they just start by producing a few vowel sounds like these two vowels so by uh, by 5 months old babies or uh, children babies uh, become able to hear the difference between the vowels uh, uh, uh and a uh, and discriminate between syllables like ba and ga. So these, they, they gradually develop this linguistic uh, capability or this linguistic capacity. Uh, so they start uh, distinguishing, distinguishing between different vowels as well as uh, different syllables as well. The second stage, which children uh, passes through this uh, this uh, acquisition uh, uh, process is called a babbling uh, and, and and it happens between six and eight months old where children start producing a number of different vowels and consonants as well as combinations of uh, of sounds such as ba 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 or ga 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 or ma 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 etc so they start producing uh, uh, strings of vowels as well as a strings of consonants uh, between ninth and between nine and ten months children become uh, become able to recognize uh, intonation patterns to the consonant and vowel combinations being produced with variation in the combination such as ba ba da da for example Okay, so they start uh, gradually. They start uh, uh, move from uh, the linguistic levels or the simple linguistic levels to the more uh, to to more uh, complicated or to more uh, complex linguistic levels. In addition to this, <coughs> during this stage of uh, acquisition process. Within this stage of babbling, uh, it, it, it provides children with some experience of social rule of speech because adults can react to uh, babbling if it's not coherent, even if it's not coherent. So it provides children with some experience of social rule. That means interaction with adults. Okay, Even if the children utter uh, uh, less meaningful uh, words, for example, or less meaningful uh, uh, sounds, okay, they can produce something that is to some extent meaningful in, in, in some ways, okay, but not fully meaningful. So the children, uh, so the, you know, the, the, the older, uh, older children or adults can at least understand something from, uh, from what, is, what is being said by such children so we can see that they so we can say that there is a, a slight level of development okay the second or sorry the third stage is called the one word stage and 
and it happens between 12 to 18 months old, where children produce a variety of recognizable single unit utterances. In other words, they start producing single words. So this stage is known as one word stage, where they can start, where they can produce single words. So this stage is characterized by speech in which single terms are uttered and the type of these words which are uttered are mostly related to everyday uh, life situation or everyday objects such as milk, cookie, cat, uh, cup, dogs, uh, you know, trees, for example. And during this stage, children may not be able to put the forms together in a more, in a more complex phrase. So they can only produce single words rather than putting these two words together in order to construct or form meaningful phrases or clauses. Uh, the following stage is called the two-word stage. It's an occurrence of two distinct words used together without use without the use of uh, uh, functional words such as determinants or articles uh, and this stage begins between 18 to 24 uh, probably two years old where the uh, child's vocabulary moves beyond 50 words approximately and at this stage children begin producing a variety of combinations such as baby chair or daddy's car or mommies eat uh, and as you see here uh, there is no uh, there is uh, there isn't any use of there isn't any use of uh, uh, functional words such as the terminals or propositions because such the pronunciation of such words or such functional words come at uh, later stages such phrases as baby chair might interpret differently based on context obviously because uh, this sentence might be, uh, yani, uh, might be, uh, might be, uh, might mean, uh, might be interpreted uh, in different ways. So when someone say "baby chair," this might indicate that, uh, you know, this 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 might this might mean a command. So, put baby in chair. Okay, or it might mean, or it might be interpreted as just an ordinary uh, sentence, like baby is in the chair, uh, baby is in the chair. So, this sentence, or, or adult, or all the children need to understand the sentence, or the intended meaning of, of children from the context. Since they are not able to produce the functional words or the functional, uh, uh, you know, uh, the full sentence. The following stage is called telegraphic stage. And it happens between two and two and a half years old. Children begin producing a large number of utterances that can be called multiple word stage or telegraphic speech uh, or telegraphic speech uh, stage. This stage is characterized by strings of words in phrases or sentences, such as this shoe or this show, this shoe, all wet or can't drink milk. As you see here, such children or children at this stage are still not able to produce functional words, despite that they increased their banks of their bank of words children vocabulary is expanding rapidly and they are initiating more talk while increased physical activity which includes running and jumping so they start producing uh, some abstract words words which are not necessarily related to or those words which are not uh, uh, existed in reality, but to some, I mean, to to small scale. At three years old, the vocab the vocabulary grows hundreds 
uh, of words and pronunciation uh, has become uh, clearer. So at this stage, the children should grow or should increase their bank of, uh, bank of, of, of words to be more than hundreds of words as well as the pronunciation they become able to pronounce words as uh, as native speakers so the acquisition process or within the acquisition process the child's linguistic produ uh, pro production appears to be mostly a matter of trying out constructions and testing whether they work or not and I think this is a this is a very important statement. So, to the children, I mean, before they reach three years old, they start testing themselves, okay, until they reach the 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 right form, or until they reach the 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 the, the, the correct pronunciation. So, children can be heard to repeat versions of what adults say on occasions and they are clearly in the process of adopting a lot of vocabulary from speech the they hear so it's a matter of input and output the more input the better output they will produce at the end and uh, by three years old Uh, so uh, this process or within this process uh, uh, or this process is based on uh, let's say uh, two uh, two important uh, or two things uh, okay or it takes a place the acquisition takes a place to throw uh, let's say two uh, elements the first element is learning through imitation and we know imitation what it means it means trying out things so children may repeat single words or phrases but not the sentence structures let's look at this example the children will hear the following sentence the dogs are hungry for example they might hear children might hear this sentence from older uh, children or adults and after some time they will pronounce it as dog hungry Okay, another example, the owl who eats candy runs fast. Okay, the children will repeat this sentence, okay, or will imitate this sentence as follows. Owl eat a candy and he run fast. As you see here, there are some grammatical mistakes from, uh, from the point of view of adults, okay, but it's still meaningful to a large extent and it's easy to to be interpreted the second element that takes place during the acquisition process is learning through correction so children will continue to use a personally continued uh, form despite the adults repetition of what the correct form should be for example let's look at this uh, this conversation or this part of conversation this extract the child would say, my teacher holded the baby rabbits and we painted them. And the mother would say, did you say your teacher held the baby rabbits? The child would say, yes. The mother will say again or will, will, will ask the child again, what did you say she did? The child would say, she held the baby rabbits and we painted them. So the, the, the children are still doing the same mistake. The mother would say, did you say she held them tightly? The child would say, no, she holded them loosely. So as you see here from this extract, the children will keep repeating the same, you know, the same mistake, okay? They will not be able to learn the throw correction from the first time. It's a matter of time. Okay, it takes its time. <coughs> okay. So the acquisition process takes or passes through the development of different parts or different 
forms of language, different components of language such as morphology, phonology, syntax, uh, uh, discourse, etc. So, f so if we uh, start by uh, talking about the development that takes place in morphology, between two and two and a half years old, children appear to use, uh, you know, the the uh, the suffix ing form in expressions such as cat sitting and money reading book. So they start this suffix ing okay by this age, which is two and two uh, and half years old. The next morphological development that takes place after acquiring this uh, suffix is the marking of regular plurals with s form as in boys as in boys and cats the acquisition of the plural marker is often accompanied by a process of overgeneralization such as foods and mans that's also another uh, uh, problem okay the children start overgeneralizing what they learn so they don't get the uh, or they don't understand that the, uh, the that we have some irregular plural nouns such as men for example or or uh, or uh, or feet for example or or tooth teeth okay they just think that adding s okay it's a plural it's the it's it's the plural form for every single noun such words confirm that imitation of parents is not the primary force in first language acquisition. So there are other forces, okay, might be internal forces, okay, and might be, or might be external forces. So uh, the children might be influenced or might be, or might imitate other people, okay, other than parents. Might be friends, might be, you know, all the adults, or all the children, etc. At the same age, different forms of the verb to be, such as are and was, begin to use. So they become able, children become able to uh, use this this uh, functional, uh, uh, let's say, um, this verb. Okay. Throughout this development, children may produce good form one day and odd from the next. So they uh, they don't acquire it without making mistakes. The evidence suggests that children are working out how to use the linguistic system while focused on communication and interaction rather than correctness. And this is very important, particularly in the early stage in the early stages of acquisition. Children should be focused on uh, communication, okay? They shouldn't be stopped or they shouldn't be paused uh, just for correction. They should be urged or they should be uh, encouraged for communication and interaction and not correcting them at all times. Okay, now we move to the development in syntax. In the formation of questions and in the use of negatives, there are three identifiable stages. We have stage one, which takes between 18 until, uh, and 26 uh, months old. We have stage, eight, uh, stage two, which is between 22 and 30 months old. And we have stage three, which is between 24 and 40 months. So let's focus about the first one, which deals with the formation of questions. What happens in during the formation of during the uh, during the formation of questions during these stages? Okay, in stage one, children add wh form to the beginning of the expressions, and they start uttering the expressions with the rise in intonation toward the end. For example, where kitty. In stage 2, which is between 22 and 30 months old, children form more complex expressions with more use of intonation, such as, what book name? And in 3, or in stage 3, which is between 
which takes a place between 24 and 40 months old, which is nearly three years old, children begin using auxiliary verbs in English questions, which is to some extent close to adult speech. So they say, will you help me? In relation to the second element that that takes place during the development of syntax is uh, uh, is, is regarding uh, the use of uh, negatives. So in stage one, children put no or not at the beginning of uh, phrases. So they say, no, you doing it. In stage two, children begin using additional negative forms such as don't and can't. For example, they say, uh, I don't want it. In stage three, children begin incorpor uh, incorporating more auxiliary verbs. So they say, she won't let go. So this is what is related to the development that takes place in syntax. Okay, let's come to development of semantics. First of all, it's not always easy to determine or to decide precisely the meanings that children attach to the words they use or produce. Because sometimes, as we know, children have a limited bank of words, so they, may, they might utter certain words to, to, uh, to, to refer to certain meanings, okay, which is not necessarily attached to the words uh, they, uh, they, they utter. Over extension which involves the child to overextend the meaning of a word on the basis on the basis of similarities of shape sound size movement and texture for example pole is an extended to all round objects so they will say the word ball for everything that is that has this shape which is round shape or sh or, 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 or round objects so they, 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 they use what is known as overextension. They, they don't know the specific words for every single uh, they intended, they intend to talk about or to refer to. The semantic development in a child's use of words is usually a process of over, uh, overextension, followed by a gradual process of narrowing down the application of each term as more words are learned and I think this is something normal that this concept uh, decreases a little bit because with with uh, with uh, I mean once children uh, get older because they will acquire more words they will increase their bank of words so they will know and they will acquire the targeted words for every single object they uh, they intend to talk about uh, that's all that I want to say about uh, first language uh, acquisition. I hope you enjoyed. I wish you all the best and see you in the next lecture. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.